I'm Young Lee from South Korea. And thank Wing Xing and the organizers for having me and uh, giving me great opportunity to share my experience with you guys from all over the world. And um, <clears throat> a couple of years ago, I attended a workshop also organized by Wing Xing. Thank you. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I'm too. too <laughs> Yes, I attended another workshop organized by Wing Xing, and I gave a presentation about how to build community capacity. And I was quite sure that I found some key points for community capacity building at the time, and I wanted to apply the findings to the real world. <laughs> so um, I got perfect opportunity to do it, and I got some funding from Yeongju City, which is a very small town in Korea. And I was very ambitious to meet the residents there and help them empowered. And um, a year later, what I got from the work is Dinja um, Talk. And um, <laughs> I'm going to tell you about the uh, rather my, my rather painful experience here. Um, I'd like to raise two questions from the experience. The first one, who are excluded from participatory urban regeneration projects in Korea? And the second one, what's going to happen to the everyday life space of the excluded residents? And um, let me explain the background of the Korean urban development situation for you to understand the, uh, the Korean situation well. The paradigm of uh, development in the built-up areas has been shifted uh, from redevelopment with demolition and eviction to regeneration with residents' uh, involvement. Uh, in the new, new paradigm, residents' participation becomes very important. And, um, some urban regeneration policies have been burgeoning since the 2000s in Korea. And, uh, such as like making livable cities, urban vitality enhancement project, etc., etc. And a research report said there are more than 40 uh, programs run by central government to deal with urban regeneration as of 2012. And for this, for this uh, new paradigm, collaborative planning actually uh, by Tachihili. Uh, has been highlighted as a normative planning way. And it's a new trend in Korea. Um, few researchers there swim against the you know, mainstream. Maybe you just don't mind. Just Thank you. Instead of standing <laughs> okay. high, I think that's too, too, too tight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyway, few researchers there swim against the mainstream by saying that you know, the residents are manipulated by the central government or the government. Uh, through the work I've done last year, I found some uh, collaboration with participation and exclusion are happening at the same time, uh, depending on the government residents' relationship. It's a kind of different size of the same coin. And, um, well, by the relationship, some special consequences can be found. If the resistance prevails, the space, oh, okay, sorry. Uh, so the, the co uh, government's flexibility is low and the residents' capacity is low and there could be the exclusion happening. And then, uh, and, and if the government's flexibility is high and residents' capacity to participate in the project is high, then they can collaborate each other very well to improve the, uh, in the environment. And um, by these relationships, some um, special consequences uh, can be found. If the resistance prevails, the space can be resident-led. And if the exclusion happens um, in the area, plan-led or government-driven space will be provided. And if the inclusion uh, is pre prevalent, space can be produced by plan dominated with residents engaged manipulated or mobilized 
and the if residents participate uh, in the project very well, their everyday life space will be improved with plan modified. In the case of Yongju city, I observed exclusion and inclusion happening together. And the Yongju city is a very small uh, town, a city in, located in rural underdeveloped area in Korea. Uh, it's far from Seoul and Busan, which means it has little benefit from uh, the, from the large city's economic development. And um, the uh, site I studied, uh, I, I worked is Samgak called Samgakji. Samgakji is um, in Hyucheondong, and Hyucheondong is uh, located in city center of the city. And um, this is the site I I was looking at. And um, the area is called Samgakji, which means triangle-shaped place. It's actually located by three train <coughs> lanes and a road. And um, approximately 120 households are in this area, and most of the residents are poor and elderly. Um, I met lots of people in 70s, and they often say, young people, young people, and I realized their young people mean ones in 50s and 60s. <laughs> many, of them, <laughs> and many of them are not healthy uh, and got some senile disease. And uh, although they have lived there for at least more than thir at least 30 years, interestingly, they have weak social capital. I think something happened maybe a couple of years ago for their uh, rep uh, election of representative of resident group. I, I they didn't actually mention that part a lot, but I strongly observe, I, 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 I certainly observe that they have very weak social capital there. And this Samgakji is, um, Samgakji is designated as village zone within natural green area. It means they have limited right to improve their housing conditions because it's not residential area. And there are, most of them are very old houses like this. And they have very poor infrastructure. They have no um, gas pipes, so they use traditional fossil fuels like this. And um, the roads are not wide enough for fire, fire trucks, garbage trucks, and delivery vehicles. So, <clears throat> and there are some areas prone to floods. It's not because it's the lowland area, but the, the, um, it's the, the, the drainage pipe was too narrow. So that's why uh, they have some kind of uh, disasters by the flood. And yeah, yeah, these are the, the uh, these photos sh can show you the kind of physical circumstances of the area. And then, yeah. and there are <coughs> different perspectives of Samgakji between <coughs> planners and civil servants and residents. Uh, with the planners or civil servants view, Samgakji is just unplanned, deprived, inconvenient, and isolated. But for residents, it's natural, accustomed, or familiar, comfortable, and accessible to other public facilities like hospital because it's near city center. So I found <coughs> residents are adapted to their space, and the space is applied by the residents' everyday life there. Um, and the, the civil servants and the planner, uh, they, they think like this, so they decided to do something. And got, uh, central government chose this area for the pilot project of national environmental design. <coughs> the principles of the project is to put the value on public design in practice to supply necessary public facilities for Yeongju citizens, not for um, Samgakji residents. 
to fulfill participatory urban regeneration and to keep existing housing areas as much as possible. And um, <clears throat> these projects actually include uh, six meter roads around the site like this to, you know, um, the, for the fire, uh, fire trucks and garbage trucks. But um, where actually these roads are residents' long desired projects, they always want the roads, the, uh, which was wide enough for their uh, life. But however, the roads bring some brothers and sisters, like park, square, English library for kids, welfare center for disabled people, and welfare center for elderly people as well. So all the facilities would be squeezed into samgakji with houses, existing houses. So that's the situation. And um, let me uh, move on to the exploring participation and exclusion. Um, who has been excluded and who has participated in the project? They are the residents who participate. And when they are about 15 to 17 old ladies, they gather in a community center in Samgakji every day around 2 p.m. just after lunch. And they, they, um, there are another center for old males as well in, the Samga, in Samgakji. Um, as, I, uh, as a coordinator and an activist, I, I started meeting them um, in May 2012. I visited them every week for about six or seven months. And first time I saw them, when I saw them, they didn't trust me and no intention to get involved. I can call this the level of non-participation. Let me read some of the uh, quotations, like the second one in June. They mean civil servants. And they never concerned for our request. It is why I don't want to tell you anything. I mean, they knew everything about what is good for residents. They already knew. I know you cannot promise the construction of a six meter roads right now. High ranking officials already knew what we need. And so they, they trying to refuse me. And <clears throat> but I just visited them once a, once a week, every, uh, you know, for some time. And a month, about a month later, mm -hmm. They started asking some questions about the project and seems to get used to being with me. Um, I wrote down a lot of notes and this is one of them. Um, there were a lot of questions to us about which houses would be demolished and when the development started and Northern Train Lane would be closed. After the bombarding question time, they, the residents offered snacks and asked us to play with them, so we played you like that. <laughs> so they, they started opening their mind to me. Um, and another month later, some of them talked about their individual emotion and personal opinions on the project. I think it's a kind of uh, level of passive uh, participation. And, and I've lived alone since my husband died. I have nowhere to live but here. I have leg pain and backache. I got operations five times and I cannot carry heavy bags for the reasons. Samgakji is the best place for me to go to the hospital and markets. There are no slopes here. There's nowhere better than here our village. But I feel tormented because of the such talks and rumors about the development. I think they must leave our houses and develop vacant land over there instead. So, well, um, the, it's a kind of change and starting point, I thought. And the uh, 14th September in 2012, there's a presentation meeting for residents who was held. And residents were outrageous when the plans opened to the residents. Like, it's all for Yongju citizens only. Kicking out the residents, it means that they, they let us die. 
And however, they, they were really ragers. I think there's a kind of power to move forward for their own right. However, unfortunately, their anger could not turn to the collective power to refuse the plan. So after a month from the meeting, I suggest the representative of the uh, resident group <coughs> collect their diverse opinions and summarize them in order to let the government know their voices. So the, um, they, the residents classified their voices into three, three types and uh, uh, one of these um, opinions uh, that was chosen by the government actually was the request to change the location of the first, one of the facilities. Mm. Then the, the outcomes of the participation, uh, the location of the welfare center for disabled people has been changed. So some houses do not need to demolish anymore. And the government promised to clean up the piled soil in the existing sewers to prevent from flooding well, until they got the new uh, drainage system in this area. I think the first outcome can be valued as the modified plan and residents' participation contributing to their, to keeping their everyday life space in a way. Uh, but I, I move on to the exclusion issues. It's about all about the participation, although it's a kind of a passive participation. And um, I move on to the exclusion issue. Um, Generally speaking, all the residents are excluded as they have no power to dissent from uh, the project or refuse it. But some of the residents are more severely excluded than others if, if their houses are to be demolished. There are about uh, 30, 36 houses will be demolished due to the public square Planned or due to building roads. So they would be more excluded than others. Moreover, if the houses are on state-owned land or on authorized um, buildings, their situation will be the worst. Um, let me explain the each excluded group in detail. The first excluded group is house owners whose house will be demolished. They actually dissent from demolition, but they are also interested in reasonable compensation. Um, Samgakji is the last place in Yeongju city to provide affordable housing for them. So without reasonable compensation, they couldn't find the proper houses to live within the city, so they have to find another place, maybe the outside the city. So I think it's quite reasonable you know, claim to get some proper com uh, compensation. And there are more excluded groups in Samgakji. Uh, they are house owners whose houses are on state-owned land and to be demolished. Also, tenants living in private rental housing with a certain amount of deposit. Um, yeah. And they are, most of them are unskilled worker with moderate income, and they are couples with unemployed children, and no reasonable compensation guaranteed because they are on the state-owned land, and no time to be involved in the projects. Um, most of them also descend from demolish, uh, demolition and also require social housing in this case. Actually, I got the, they did their opinions from a survey to the residents. They've never spoken out loud about their, uh, their, their opinions and their claims. So Yeongju city seems not to care about their little voices. That's interesting because um, I asked about the social housing uh, to a civil servant in Yeongju city one day and he said to me that government has no duty to provide the social housing for them because it's not official development project, it's pilot project. So 
for, for providing residential area, uh, areas, so so they they, they wouldn't provide uh, any social housing for them. The most excluded groups are tenants who live in the house houses to be demolished. Most of them are quite disabled and elderly single person household and they are unskilled temporary workers. It doesn't matter how old they are, they always work a lot in a restaurant or shops or unemployed as well. And uh, they have lived in a private rental housing. The rent they pay is approximately 150 to 200 US dollars per month, which is actually quite low. And and they descend from demolition but have nowhere to live in Yeongju and they don't even ask any social housing because they cannot afford the social housing. Uh, the maintenance fee for the social housing is actually higher than the rent they are paying now. So they said uh, they want another similar conditions flood or houses within the Samgakji, not somewhere else because there's nowhere else to go. So they just want some um, similar situation, but it's not easy to find because the housing stock will be uh, reduced. Okay, so, oh, so now, <laughs> now we, here we are. It's conclusive remarks. Um, where it's, what I found from this experience is participation can be rhetoric and just half success if residents excluded are ignored. With the government's flexibility, residents could develop their capacity to shape their everyday life space, which I did for them a bit. <laughs> but participatory regeneration projects could also exclude residents and destroy their everyday life space. So without a uh, uh, careful consideration for the excluded uh, residents there, the, the regeneration projects, which people think it's more developed way for the residents, will not work properly and it will be very similar to the urban redevelopment projects, which was not very good system. Thank you. cosmetic question like about the cosmetics of your wording but the sense I got from the groups you talked about as excluded uh, seem to be included in the regeneration project most uh, in the sense that they were affected most mm. so is it like exclusion from the project or is it more like exclusion from uh, having an impact on the direction the project takes. Uh, well, they seem to be included, but really they don't. They are not. Because a civil servants do care about the residents who have their own voices and to provide anything in Samgakji, but uh, if they have little voice because they have no power to uh, get something, uh, they are you know, just ignored. So I think they are still excluded uh, from the project. But in a way, you might think it, they are included to, you know, to some extent. Uh, and that's what I was uh, to me it just 
demonstrates how the, the idea, the word participation, we still have to ask to go back to, to Don's talk, you know, about what politics. I mean, what kind of participation? I mean, is it just the word participation that becomes a requirement by the government policy, which is intending to redevelop every single chief area? And so, I mean, is that really what we call citizen participation? Uh, no, or is it just the requirement? I mean, that seems very dangerous to me, kind of appropriation of the neoliberal um, the, uh, strategy of that word and the concept. And that's something that's pretty dangerous, I think, for the social justice movement groups. I mean, we really have to take that apart. Mm. Because they don't, it's still, you know, the tenants, rights and the use value of housing is completely not important in the scheme. The fact that you put a welfare center in and knock people out of their houses who are weak and don't have any replacement is very obvious, mm -hmm. you know, really dangerous for the policy. It reminds me of that, you know, Sadango Plus 22 documentary film, which I highly recommend to everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my mentors made it after 30 years of redevelopment in Seoul. And the people in the end, it's four generations, from the grandmother to the grandkids. And by the end, they're all in social housing after being evicted millions of times from different things. Uh, but the, the people who are in their 20s, they're, they're even poorer. I mean, it's, just, it's downward mobility and, and disenfranchisement, uh, which you know the US managed to do it pretty well in a structural way. Um, so that's, that's what I think about, I think it's really important to point out about this participation mm -hmm. policy. There's no, is that really participation? If you can't decline the project or shape it to be what you need. Mm -hmm. If I mean, who's participating in whose process? Who's participating? Who is participating in whose process? Whose process? Process. Okay. Mm. Well, normally, or participation in this uh, context, well, I also agree with uh, Lisa, and participation cannot be a panacea. And residents also can choose to accept the project or refuse participation in the project as well. So, uh, but in this case, residents have no idea whether they should participate or not. So some um, residents who have houses and have time to discuss about these issues and they also they are also interested in some compensation so they started thinking of participation but it's not the real answer for or the real method to develop the to, to improve the situation but um, yeah so some of them who have time and and money, they can participate, they could participate in the project, but as you can see, more than half uh, residents cannot participate or do not, or do not participate. Is that the answer? No? <laughs> uh. I think uh, it's kind of your presentation is something uh, new for me because in Korean uh, stages of the urban re regenerations follow the Japanese yes. uh, cases because uh, the Japanese have a strong uh, battles to get a, the squatter settlement in Japan in, until uh, until late night. 1970s, there's a strong social movement for getting housing rights, yeah. and uh, they successfully get a uh, national policy for regeneration or renewal laws. And after that, 
such kind of the uh, regeneration of the poor districts have been, and according to the law, it is very government initiatives yes. or very uh, the consultant or architect groups, progressive groups, mm -hmm. getting into their settlements and uh, everything as uh, guided by the uh, such kind of professional. Yes. And say they say the particip participatory workshops, yeah. many, many workshops. The, but, but the old residents are not so keenly recognized. They are uh, to the address their attitude or so, just compensation or the, uh, their memories of the places and then some talk with each other and peacefully uh, <laughs> some concluding to get uh, to renew the, the villages. That's that, that just, uh, that just the end. And so, um, so my understanding is that the, in the Korea, in the late, late 1880s, is a very strong housing, housing movement. Yes. But uh, in these stages of the, uh, of course, there's uh, some regener regeneration law was enacted in, in this year. This year yeah. It's kind of the um, very enthusiasm, enthusiasm for this housing arena is not so strong or weaker. Mm -hmm. That's the past puzzle is very <laughs> not struck my my heart mm -hmm. in this and cases. Okay. That's my impression. Um, well I I think to, um, Korean uh, urban regeneration policy trend is exactly followed uh, but uh, it, it follows uh, the Japanese cases, I agree with you. And the government always try to drive residents to participate because they think it's ethical and it's normative. And they got a kind of typical programs to educate and try train residents to participate. And they also asked me to do that too in this area. But I found it's, it's not possible for, you know, because they are very, poor and old and they are not interested in such pro uh, projects at all. They are only interested in the roles and some, some improvement, or, or, or where they, uh, improvement for their living, uh, uh, everyday life space. Um, but nowadays I think that, uh, the urban regeneration projects are burgeoning in Korea. It's because um, Korean, uh, the real estate economy is not quite well at the moment. It's because of the kind of economic uh, recession. So uh, there's no way to uh, develop or, or improve the old deprived areas in city centers. So government tactically chose such projects to improve, you know, gradually improve the situation, not providing a lot of housing. So that's why we, uh, we move to the other regeneration projects from the redevelopment projects. Then that's why I called it just a trend. It will be changed again.